This is Sports Matters with Jerry Collin. Jerry Collin. It's so retro. We cover all the biggest sports on the planet. MMA, boxing, snooker, football, darts. You name it and we cover it. Okay, so welcome to Sports Matters with me, Jerry Collin. We're in Dublin. We finally got up here. Uh, look what I have next to me. Look at this legend. Uh, Dylan the Duke. Uh, absolute honour. So uh, thank you for Thanks taking for the time. Me, thank you for having me. Good stuff. Now, the last fight, dear Lord, <laughs> uh, you fought Adam in Liverpool. And for me, so fair, definitely the fight of the year. Like, anyone, if, you have any, if, if, if anyone has any critics, you've certainly proved them wrong. You've got very little, yeah, but... Yeah. It was a weird fight, it was a weird night, um, uh, and I wore something, you have to be the best in the world, so I went down and I showed on the best in the world on my worst money, and uh, I killed a man and put him asleep, so you did. that's how it works, so uh, I, I feel good about that performance, looking back on it now, um, obviously taking my emotional state out of it and not being annoyed at myself, not being critical, I'm, I'm very proud of myself that I can take them sort of shots and come through it, you know, and I really, a lot of guys I think, would have had featherweights coming out and lightweights coming out, giving them grief and giving them stuff. We had the opposite. We had, you know, competitors coming out giving me praise because yeah. they know they don't want none of this. They don't. Because <laughs> they're looking yeah. at this going, what, how am I going to finish him? How am I going to beat him? How am I going to get the job done? You know what I mean? There was a lot of points in that fight where I was fighting, you know, especially for maybe two and a half minutes of the first round, you yeah. know, it was on wobbly feet. And yeah. I, I, I can't really remember much of it, it was just an autopilot ball. It was even, even one of them shots where you took the shot, but you, you managed to kind of flip and roll, yeah. so you knew kind of how to stay safe in a sense, you know? I think the only thing I had going into that fight was uh, jiu-jitsu really, to be honest. Um, my whole, I had a pretty bad camp, uh, I just didn't have the bodies around me, I had a broken hand. There was just a couple of, there was just a couple of things going on, you know what I mean? Um, and it, it wasn't, it just wasn't perfect for me and with the hand and all that, it really did make training a little bit difficult, so yeah. uh, no excuses around, but my jiu-jitsu was on point and my grappling was on oh, point for the fight, yeah. if anything my striking just didn't turn up on the night, it was, it was a little bit weird, like, but my grappling's always there and I, I, I found that was one thing during the camp that I worked a lot on was just grappling out and um, SPG swords with um, Chris Fields and Don King, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I was just Good. out there. Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, I was in Concord, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever, all days of the week, just doing jiu-jitsu the whole time. Yeah. So, it, it turned out well, like, you know, and uh, there was a couple of situations in that fight that happened, and they were reactive, you know, I mean, I would hit that butterfly sweep quick off a guillotine, uh, yeah. escape, and, uh, you know. It uh, was, but you can't have, like, your reactions, like, you know, like, when you look back at the fight, like, and I remember, I've watched the fight about ten times, me and the lads are always watching it, like, your reactions, like, you had the perfect reactions to that fight. Like there was no real panic. You know, you knew what you were doing. It was all under control. So, like, obviously the training camp was bad because in the back of your mind, you're, you know, the hand and stuff. You're you're trying to test that, but it's uh, there. Like, yeah, it was perfect. Like I, I knew I kind of had it in my own mind going into that fight that the fourth clean shot I landed with my right hand did go again. I yeah. did go again. No, I didn't feel it in the fight whatsoever. Adrenaline, well, adrenaline's a great thing. It's a great drug. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I didn't feel anything in the fight. And even the shots that I was getting caught with, I didn't really feel anything. I was just kind of just, I don't know what, it was a weird, one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had in my life, but it was just weird and my state of mind, bad than anything. But damn, was it fun. That was a fun day. <laughs> 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 and future, like future fights, there's obviously been a lot of mentions. Um, can you tell us when you're fighting next? Um, I'll be back December. December I'll be back up. I don't know who against it. I don't know who I got. I, don't, I know the card, but... Doesn't matter who you got. No, it doesn't matter who I got. No, it definitely doesn't. Like, um, you don't need to be proved to you. You don't need to prove to anyone that you're tough. But the last week, you know yeah. what I mean. No you proved. Can, yeah. No yeah. one can say that I'm some little uh, wannabe that's just gonna fall and crumble under some sort of pressure. You know what I mean? I'm in yeah. this since I'm a little twelve-year-old baby. You know what I mean? So yeah. I've been I've been doing this a long time. So I'm tough. The real really. deal. And like uh, John Kavanagh said about ten years ago. The one for the future. He gets asked that question all the time. He mentioned your name. What's it like to have John say that? Because we all know it. Like even before Reality Bites, that great documentary, mm. uh, like I, I knew the name. Well, what does it mean like to have John say that? Oh, uh, 
the only thing I'll ever say is um, when I'm a guy who gets compliments off people who don't give compliments very lightly. Yeah. Um, I'm a guy who, you know, um, I have people like Peter Queeley who, who doesn't ever really say a good word about most people unless it's a fact of like yeah. the likes of Chris Fields, Tom King, um, Ashton Daly. I've got Connor. I've I've got all the guys. I've got Arkham and uh, and John as well. You know what I mean. But these are guys that don't give out praise lightly. They don't give out praise if it's not deserved. You yeah, know what I mean. Yeah. So I get praise off these guys, and I get praise off the guys that matter. So of course, hearing it, it, it always is grateful, and I'm always I'm always taken back a little bit and smiling a little bit when I see it, and yeah. I. I kind of think about it like I'm only a 20 year old kid like from flats that's in a sport trying to make his dream a reality you know what I mean so to hear that it does mean a lot but nobody needs to tell me I'm going to the top nobody needs to tell me I'm the next best thing because to me I'm Ireland's only prospect we don't think there is any other prospect other than me and yeah. I think that's fair to say like um, I, I think I'm the one who brings in AMs I'm the one who brings I'm the one who brings excitement, and I, I do definitely feel like the Irish public love me, so and I love them, so it's good. It's good to hear. And of course, um, are you training away at the moment? Are you tipping away, just kind of keeping active? I'm back. I'm back. The last, I think I took a couple of weeks off after the last fight. I just, um, I had a lot of personal stuff going on at home and whatnot, yeah. so I just took a little bit of time to spend with me at this time and enjoy the perks of being a professional fighter, not having to work and you know get to take some weeks off when you can. And now I'm back in the gym, I'm back training, I'm just looking to get back into the gi and just train jiu-jitsu again. And I'm not too worried about training and getting into fight mode or anything like that. I just want to enjoy my training for a little bit. And um, I've got some big news coming up for October, I think, so Good stuff. stay tuned. I, I'm hoping to be heading to California for a month, so Sweet. that's going to be cool. And, uh, Looking forward to that. It'd be nice to get out that way as well. Yeah, it'd be great. I'm uh, going out to SPG Fall Camp, uh, I'm pretty sure, which is um, Matt Thornton seminar. Good Matt Thornton, uh, you know, head boss of SPG, yeah. the, the boss man. So uh, Matt has a seminar on Travis uh, Davison, one of Matt's black belts, and uh, John Frankel, one of... SPG's best black belt and one of um, one of SPG's best coaches yeah, yeah. as well. It's going to be there, and I can't wait to go over there to the guys again and um, meet up with them and share some knowledge and take some of that digital knowledge as well. Because being around them guys is amazing. So I'm looking forward to going off to Cali. Good stuff. And just for the younger lads, we always said, what advice can you give them? Because we know they have to work hard. It's mm. all about working hard. What's the best advice you give them? Because they're all looking up to you. You know what I mean? And, and they want to know, they want to hear from yourself. Like, what's the best advice? Don't get into this sport. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't get into it, man. It's, it's a lot. You, re of you really have to want it. Like. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not something like, I'm broke. All of us are broke. Every single one of us is broke. Even, like, it, it's not easy. Uh, like, in the sport, you have to, you do have to have a lot of help from your family. And your family do have to support you willingly. And, um, well, any questions are asked, you know what I mean? When any doesn't take rent off me, when any doesn't take anything off me, when any lets me live in my house, pays for me food, pays for everything for me, does everything for me, and, and without any questions asked, just because she knows, I don't, I can't do it myself, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I'm not in any position to do it myself at the moment. It's either sacrifice everything, put all my time into this MMA career, I give a half and a half, and you just know one isn't going to take off, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. The only advice I'd give the people is if it's something that you really want to do, definitely do it. But um, uh, it's always good to have a backup and uh, yeah. you know going to college and getting a degree and getting education. You know, Adam Lobov said something great to me before. You know, you're you're never gonna go and you're never gonna go back and look and go. I, I wish I hadn't learned that. You're always gonna go back and go. I wish I had learned that. Knowledge is power. So the kids, I I wouldn't be putting my career and all my eggs into this basket because from my personal point of view, from the people I know that have got bad injuries from this sport, from the people who have had to retire, whoever it is, you know what I mean? It's not all it's made out to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a great thing, I love martial arts, yeah. but it's not, it's not the do all and end all, you know what I mean? Yeah. If getting to the UFC is do or die for you, then you're probably not gonna have a happy life anyway. 
like three letters, what does it really mean? I'm enjoying the journey, but uh, oh, for the kid that wants to get into this, uh, have a backup plan. Have yeah. something to fall back on because things can go wrong and okay. it's too late to start planning when it's gone wrong. You know what I mean? I so that's all I'd say to people. I like, don't have a backup plan. And yeah, it's, yeah. Oh yeah, it's something that I wish I had have invested in. Yeah. You know, maybe went to college, done something, but you know, I'm here, I'm on my path, and I'm on yeah. my path to world title, so it's all good. But uh, definitely a backup plan, and just to be secure in life is yeah. more important than anything. You know what I mean? You're, work, you're working very hard for it, though, like, cause yeah. as you say, your body's on the, like, your life's on the line in them fights, because you mm. know, it's just one of them things. It's a serious sport, and like you're out there training hard, putting you know the work, taking the knocks. It's well, one of those things uh, you have to do remember uh, this is a tough man sport like yeah and i think a lot of kids are getting into this thinking that this is going to be points kickboxing points crazy you know what i mean yeah i think i said it to you before you did yeah yeah <laughs> it's not that <laughs> oh, no it's yeah. not that it's it's a tough sport and you need to uh, windows down but you know uh, the swords of connor like the royals of mma in ireland and just mainly Connor in general has just attracted so many new faces to the sport, yeah. which in a way is great and in a way is kind of bad, but yeah. well, there is no negatives, I suppose, to that. If you're getting more people involved in Irish MMA and more people liking it, or you, like I've walked into houses now with families of like little girls and oh, they're sitting down watching the UFC, like, you know yeah. what I mean? So the sport is, is what it is, but backup plans, backup back plans. plans. <laughs> and 12 months from now, Dylan, where can you see yourself? Because I know, I've seen all, I, like, I look at forms, a lot of mentions of UFC, and I know you only want to join UFC. I believe that's, you've said that to me before. Mm. You want UFC and that's it. Yeah. You're working hard. I don't want Bellator or anything. It's, it's not in my mind. Like, I think a lot of people are kind of jumping shift from the UFC to Bellator more for money. Yeah, oh, definitely money, yeah. But for me, ever since, I was, ever since I was 12, I've always wanted to be... Um, not even 12, I wouldn't say, because I didn't really know about the UFC when I first got into it. But when I was about 14 and had a couple of years training underneath me, all I ever wanted to do was be a UFC world champion. Like, yeah. all I ever wanted to, all I've ever dreamt about was, I, I still dream about, I walk around the gym, I ask anyone, I walk around the gym, push me stomach, like, I touch me stomach and I rub it, like, and, yeah. oh yeah, I, I do envision that, that title around my waist already, because, why not, like, <laughs> I've been exactly. envisioning it since I'm a kid, like, so, yeah. but for me, it's, um, definitely is something that I put a lot of time into so the UFC is the only thing for me yeah and it's I think it's just something I've made in my mind you know what I mean for years it's just been a dream so I'd love to be at that stage and I'd love to I will be at that stage and I, I can't wait to take my world title like because that's there is I'm not going there to be friendly and just have a couple of fights like, yeah, yeah I want to go there and I do want to run through mm -hmm. a lot of people like so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. the next 12 months I've had this question a couple of times First time I said the UFC, and the same time now I do think the next time the UFC come back to Dublin, I will be on that card, yeah. prelim and or whatever. But definitely without a doubt, I'll be on the next UFC Dublin card. Yeah. It means a lot, my man. Thanks so much, You're man. a gent, Pleasure. absolute Thank gent. You so much. Thanks a million, guys. Check out all the latest interviews with Jerry and the Stairs weekly on Sports Matters. <laughs>